Hello and welcome to the VCAN Biofilm Removal Training video. We'd like to take you through the various stages of cleaning and the effect on biofilm removal on a small plastic piece. We start by preparing the biofilm and we have a bucket of vegetable peelings which we mix with water and the plastic pieces to form the biofilm on and we leave these in a warm place for three days. We then remove the plastic pieces and place them into a, a bucket. What I'm going to show you is the effect on the different stages of cleaning on the biofilm removal. The first stage is to take a small plastic piece and just wash it in water. And after we've done each stage, we'll use ATP to measure the effect of each cleaning stage. The machine we'll use is an ATP machine like this one and we'll use these ATP swabs to test the surface. We'll start by measuring the amount of biofilm on a dirty piece. ATP is adenosine triphosphate and it's an energy molecule that's present in all organic materials, including food and bacteria. The machine measures the amount of light that's generated when the ATP reacts with an enzyme. On a dirty surface, we've got a reading of 4,868. We'll now take a new plastic piece and we'll wash it just in water to see how that affects the biofilm removal. So the, the water has removed um, quite a lot of the material and we're now down to 1,050. We'll now look at the effect of combining the water with the detergent. We'll rinse the piece first and then we'll put it into detergent and water and give it a, a rinse round. And then we'll actually rinse this again because the detergent can have an effect on the ATP.
So washing with the detergent water, we've got a result of 230. Now we'll look at the effect of a combination of the detergent with scrubbing. So again, we'll take a dirty piece, we'll give it a rinse in water first, and then we'll take it over to the detergent where we'll use um, some different cleaning tools. So the selection of cleaning tools is quite important. Um, picking the right tool to clean both the outside and the inside of the piece of equipment uh, is quite critical. So here I have a very stiff, uh, very small toothbrush. Um, it can be used, it, it does, does get into the nooks and crannies, um, but it's quite difficult to control and hard work. So I think in this case, for the outside, it's better to choose a slightly softer washing brush like this one. Um, and it's always best to wash the piece under the water to minimise the flick that happens with the bristles, which um, minimises the spread of contamination. So in this case, we'll put the piece into the water and scrub the outside. And then for the inside, um, a tube brush is ideal, but it's about picking the tube brush with the right size. So this is a tube brush, but this one you can see is, is far too big. You can move it around on the inside, but again, not as effective as if we choose one that really fits the, the whole size better. You can feed it in and then again, underwater, you can give the inside of the, the piece a really good clean. So before we actually swab this, we'll rinse it again in fresh water. You can say the, the detergent can affect the, the ATP reaction. And then we'll swab to see how clean the piece is. And with the scrubbing in detergent, we've now got a result of three. It is often thought that just using chemicals can achieve a good clean on the surface. So what we'll do is we'll actually take a, a dirty piece, we'll give it a rinse, and we'll put it into a disinfectant solution without going through the different stages of cleaning that we've already done to see what effect that has. What we'll do is we'll leave it in that solution for a while because disinfectants need time to work. So it will be in the, in the solution for three to five minutes. While we're doing that, we'll go through all of the stages again and then finish with the disinfection step, which would complete the cleaning sequence that you would normally do. Take a dirty piece, give it a rinse, get rid of the, the vegetable peelings. Take it over to the detergent bucket to get scrubbed. Very 
put some clean water and then put it into the uh, disinfectant. And again, leave that for three to five minutes. After five minutes, we'll take the, the pieces that we just put into the disinfectant without doing the cleaning sequence. We'll give that a rinse because again, the disinfectant can interfere with the ATP reaction. And then we'll measure the amount of biofilm left on that surface. So for a surface that's just been in disinfectant without going through the various stages of cleaning, we have a result of 309. Now we'll measure the biofilm remaining on the surface that has been through the different cleaning stages and into disinfection. And again, we'll rinse that in fresh water first. And then we'll swap. So for a surface that's been through all of the cleaning stages and been into disinfection, we have a result of one. I'll now hand over to my colleague, Stina, who will explain the results to you. Yes, I want to tell about the results from the biofilm removal training. When we are measuring ATP uh, in this um, training, we get a certain ATP level. Uh, ATP level below uh, above 500 means that the surface uh, is dirty, and a level below 200 means that the surface is clean. So when we started with a, a plastic piece that was dirty uh, with biofilm, we got a level of 4,868. So a very dirty surface. Uh, taking a plastic piece and shaking in it water um, lower the ATP down to 1050. Then using water and uh, detergent, shaking in detergent, lower the ATP level down to 230. So um, it's not defined as clean yet, but we did remove a lot of the biofilm, but there's still some biofilm left. The next step was then to introduce the manual cleaning to use the brushing and the scrubbing. And we did that and lowered the ATP level down to 3. 
So going through the process of both uh, rinsing, using water and then scrubbing uh, really makes a difference. So now we have a, a clean plastic piece, a clean surface, um, but we can do it even better. We can also go through the entire process, cleaning process. So using water, detergent, uh, the scrubbing, and then disinfection for five minutes. And then we lower the ATP level to one. And that's actually the lowest level we can get. But we also see that the disinfection does not make the, the such a big difference as the mechanical action as the scrubbing. To um, uh, underline this, uh, to stress this, we also took a dirty piece um, and uh, with biofilm and put it directly into disinfectant. And we saw that the, the disinfection works. It actually lowers the, the, the biofilm level, the ATP level, but it does not clean it entirely. Um, so there was a level of 309. And that means uh, that uh, this piece is not clean yet. And um, it also stressed the importance of doing the manual cleaning to go through the entire cleaning process. Thank you.